Hello everyone and welcome to some SpaceX Mini ITS speculation and also a discussion of how to make your own realism overhaul configurations, though just the basic intro, not totally in-depth of all the bells and whistles, if you will. Uh, this is the default configuration for the KK Launcher's SpaceX ITS booster fuel tank, as you can see. And uh, so this is from the Launchers Pack, you just type Launchers Pack at the forums. And uh, this is configured to liquid fuel and oxidizer. So we have to configure this for realism overhaul, which means it has to be using liquid methane and liquid oxygen instead. Um, there are a number of other issues that could happen if your base model is not the right scale. But in this case, it so happens that the KK Launcher's ITS booster fuel tank is the right scale. So that's good, we don't have to mess with this. Otherwise, what we would do is, and I've got an example open here, this is for the Mark II expansion pack. You would delete the model and recreate the model with uh, the stuff in. And so uh, you would just copy this model line here. And instead of having scale 111, you would say uh, scale, whatever the scale you need. For the Mark II parts, it's 1.722222. And then for the other parts, it's generally 1.6. And you might have to move the uh, the attachment nodes. Uh, sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Uh, so yeah, you may have to move the attachment nodes if the model is the wrong scale to start off with. Thankfully, we don't have to worry about that. It is the correct scale, so we leave that alone. Um, the main thing we need to worry about is the fuel tank, because this is a fuel tank. That's the functionality it provides. But before we can deal with the fuel tanks, we actually have to configure any engines that might be involved. Now, if your particular mod uh, doesn't come with any engines, you're going to be using engines from another mod that's already configured for realism overall, that's great. But otherwise, you're going to have to take a look. So this is uh, SpaceX Raptor Vacuum. You're going to have to get a mass for it. This is a totally speculative mass because SpaceX hasn't told us how heavy it is. This line here that says a percentage mark RSSRO config equals false will tag it and say work in progress RO. If instead you say true here, uh, it will say it won't have any uh, tag on the front of it. It'll just assume that's RO configured. If you don't have this tag, it'll say non RO. So that's how it works. Uh, uh, something lacking this tag will say non RO. Something with false says work in progress, and something that says true will just be RO configured. The top line here, at part. So you, uh, in the original file, you want that name. And so, uh, and that's at the top of this particular configuration, but this is for the Raptor vacuum, that's that name, and then colon for realism overhaul. Okay, and then at module, module engines. And every time we say at, it's going to change some variable that's already there. This percentage mark doesn't necessarily change a variable that's already there. If it's not already there, it will add it. If it is already there, it will change it. So that's what the percentage mark means. Otherwise, um, if something is not already there, you don't need, need the at or the percentage. So um, that's why this uh, exclamation mark got rid of the igniter resource there. And then this one adds a new igniter resource, but doesn't need an at or a percentage because there was no igniter resource we had already gotten rid of it. So uh, that's what the percentage ats and exclamation marks mean. But uh, at module, engi uh, module engines, and this is um, a catch-all for anything that would come after it. Often that's module engines fx. So it'll grab the module engines FX, but if it so happens to be module engines something else, it'll, it'll modify that as well. So we have the stated minimum thrust and maximum thrust of the Raptor vacuum engines, heat production 100, and then we change the propellants. So we need to get the fuel mixture right, and in this case, SpaceX hasn't provided us with the fuel mixture, and even if they did, it would be complicated because the fuel mixture they would state would probably be based on mass, whereas Kerbal Space Program it's based on volume. And since we don't know what temperature they're going to cool the fuels to because they super cute, cool things, um, we don't really know what density it would have necessarily. Uh, so uh, just to keep things simple, I found another engine configuration in Realism Overhaul already that already had liquid methane and liquid oxygen and I copied those ratios. 
Um, one other thing you could do is uh, go online and find another engine that has methane and oxygen uh, usage. Or, uh, though, again, you'll have the density problem. Or uh, th there are other mathematical ways to figure, that out, figure it out. There are programs that you can find fuel mixtures for. But thankfully, Realism Overhaul already had a methane-oxygen engine, and it'll probably have a kerosene-oxygen engine, hydrogen-oxygen engine, so you can find those. SpaceX themselves provided the vacuum ISP. This atmosphere curve is the ISP. The zero is for the vacuum, one for the surface. Based on the the vacuum ISP and they stated the chamber pressure and also the nozzle ratio those three numbers uh, can allow you to calculate the other ISP once you've got those so yeah and minimum thrust up here of course is the lowest throttle it can be set to so in realism overhaul they can't go from zero to maximum throttle there is a minimum thrust in stock that would be zero in realism overhaul, that's a number. So this can throttle down to 20%. And then, of course, ullage in realism overhaul, that needs to be added because the stock parts don't have that. And in this case, the fuel does need to be settled before ignition. So that's what that means. Percentage ullage equals true. If your fuel does not need to be settled before ignition, then you would set that to false. Uh, percentage pressure freddy fed equals false that means it does not require a service module tank which is good because we're not going to use one and percent ignitions equals 12 means that we're going to add an ignition count and set that equal to 12 in this case I just had the igniter resource be electric charge for simplicity because I don't have any particular information about how they're going to ignite it and this is the simplest way to go okay once you've got your engines configured we can go into KSP. So we need a fuel tank and we're going to have a procedural parts fuel tank for now because we haven't configured our fuel tank yet and we need that Raptor engine that we had the right numbers for, right? So let's say uh, we were doing the Raptor vacuum though of course the, I've reconfigured all the Raptor sea level and everything. The reason you need this is because you need to figure out how, how much fuel you're going to be putting in the fuel tank, the booster fuel tank. So how long do they need to burn for is one question. But the information that, okay, sometimes you'll have the burn time for the engines. Uh, sometimes you'll know that. Sometimes you'll know, like with the SpaceX case, how big the fuel tank is, how much mass. So in this case, we have the right mixture ratio and you can see the mass and so you'll just size the fuel tank to and for the ITS it was 12 meters to as big as it needs to be to have the mass and then instead of having just uh, one Raptor engine and that's a vacuum anyway we wanted the booster situation so we want the center thing we want the outer circle uh, we can just attach it like that for now inner circle okay and then you could put a probe core on top and check the burn time as well. But anyway, the key thing is getting the numbers from here. And actually, it'll truncate it, so you need to actually get the numbers from here. Once you've figured out exactly how much fuel you'll need in your fuel tank based on the new fuel mixture, instead of liquid fuel and oxidizer, you have a new fuel mixture. Once you get those numbers, then you can switch back to working on the fuel tank. So we need to remove liquid fuel and oxidizer and back on our fuel tank we say remove resource liquid fuel, remove resource liquid oxidizer and then add a new module, curly brackets, module name is module fuel tanks. The volume, well we got the numbers when we sized the tank based on the engines and um, Turns out that that's the total volume, and then we had the volume of liquid methane and the volume of liquid oxygen in the tank. Here I've made a balloon cryo because that seemed to be the right mass. They're making extremely lightweight tanks for the ITS uh, using advanced materials. And if you take a look at the mass that they posted uh, for the tanks, the dry mass of the stage, um, it could be that you could uh, make this fuel tank heavier. So this is going to add a separate fuel tank mass than the dry mass of the overall fuel tank that's listed here at mass. 
Um, in this case, I just uh, had a base mass that was fairly high and the internal fuel tank was fairly low. Uh, either way, you could make this fairly low and make this a heavier tank. That's another option. Okay, so that's the basics of how to configure uh, engines and fuel tanks in Realism Overhaul. Otherwise, uh, everything else is fairly simple. Like this is the grid fin. Uh, you just set uh, RO, RSSRO config to, in this case, work in progress. You, uh, you might want to fix the max temp and a lot of stock configs don't have a skin max temp. Uh, that is a thing that is important for realism overhaul. So here you see in the stock configuration it says max temp 2000 but you also need to add a skin max temp and I made it a little bit generous. Uh, this is very very high uh, so the chances of this grid fin burning off are very very low. You might not want to be so generous you might want to make it uh, a little bit toasty. Now how do you make a mini ITS? Well, you'll note that I've added module tweak scale to everything. And this is the lazy way of doing it. So we've, uh, once we've configured all these ITS parts, um, I, I'll discuss RCS in a later video. Um, and uh, on some of the other fiddly bits that we're talking about here. But uh, again, most of the parts, all you need to do is uh, rescale them for realism overhaul, 1.6 for most parts, 1.722222 for a Mark II expansion, uh, Mark II parts. Um, and then uh, make sure that you've got the temperature okay, and then mass is okay, like, uh, and yeah, it's not actually that hard. But there are, there are some complications with RCS and such. Once we do that, we want to make a mini ITS. Well, the easy way of doing that, the lazy way, is adding the tweak scale module. The way you do that is, of course, you have to have the mod tweak scale. Uh, percentage, module, uh, open square bracket, tweak scale, close square bracket. That's how you add any module to it. Uh, curly bracket, and then tweak scale has this uh, type thing. Some of them are surface attach. Some of them are stacked square, and then the, there are other kinds. You can look in the tweak scale folder to see examples. It has an examples folder. I just went with stack and set the default scale to 1.25, which is the stock standard. You could say 1, which is more of a realism overhaul standard. And so I allowed scaling of the fuel tank. I allowed scaling of the grid fin. allowed scaling, uh, scaling of the inner stage. The booster RCS I didn't because it's an engine kind of thing and uh, the little uh, body flaps I did, but the engines I didn't. So we're keeping the engines the same, obviously. You don't want to try and scale the engines. Okay, and uh, basically, so this is the KK Launchers one. Let's say you wanted to use the Thrim Aerospace one. Well, uh, frankly, except for getting the name of the parts uh, right and maybe occasionally removing a reaction wheel, that's what that is, remove reaction, uh, module reaction wheel, um, it's basically the same. You remove the liquid fuel oxidizer, you add your fuels in a module fuel tanks thing. Uh, this is a remote tech so that you can control the booster uh, because you might want to bring it back down. And here again we have module tweak scale for mini making a mini ITS. Now you have to be careful about tweak scale in realism overhaul because of Ferrum Aerospace. Sometimes they get along, sometimes they don't. And uh, yeah, so once you've made a configuration for something like uh, ITS, it's very easy to port it from one model of the ITS to another model of the ITS. So this Raptor C level engine is configured basically the same way as the one for the other mod. Uh, so it's sort of trivial. Uh, there are sort of minor issues that you'll come across, like Realism Overhaul deletes all the alternators in the engine, so the engines don't provide electric charge. Uh, that's important. And um, of course you might want to change the gimbling on engines depending on, in this case, the sea level engines. Uh, of course the vacuum engines for the Raptor don't gimbal at all, so if you come across an uh, engine that's gimbling when it's not supposed to, you'd remove the module for gimbling, and so forth. Okay. Let's turn to uh, Kerbal and see what the mini ITS looks like when we use tweak scale. So we take out the full ITS and I'll just use the KK Launchers one. Oops. 
because it has fewer parts. Um, the Three Mirror Space one, the legs are separate parts, and it also has a docking port part. I've got tweak scale on them, but it's, it'll be just be simpler this way. So this is all one big part for the KK Launchers one. And uh, now when we right click on it, if we can find the hitbox, uh, I took out some of the seats. I put 12 Kerbals in instead of 100, uh, just so I don't have a huge menu here. Um, right now the scale is 1.25. Now according to an Ars Technica article, one motivation for making the mini ITS is because the facilities that SpaceX has uh, to construct the ITS uh, can only accommodate 9 meters right now. So we're expecting no more than 9 meters. The original was supposed to be 12 meters in diameter. So we're going from 12 to 9 and so that's about the ratio from uh, 1.25 to 0.925. Um, going from 12 to 9 would be 75% uh, and in this case it's 74% so it'll fit right in. So this is the biggest that we would expect a mini ITS would be. So, and again, the Marvel's a tweak scale. It, of course, it scales the fuel properly. Okay, uh, if we uh, go back to full scale and take a look at the UI, uh, 963,000 methane. If instead we tweak scale down, you can see 120. And so it all works very nicely. See, so it has the appropriate amount of fuel based on the new volume. And uh, if you reduce the size of something by a factor of uh, 0.75 uh, in one, di uh, one dimension, the diameter, then the actual volume changes by the cube of that. So in this case, it's about 0.4. So this new ITS is going to have about 0.4 or 40% the mass of the original. So that's our new mini ITS. Okay, otherwise the uh, I'm, I'm pleased to report that the animations work still after tweak scaling. Um, whether there is weird bounciness because of tweak scaling, that's another issue. I don't know. Uh, sometimes if, ha if you tweak scale the landing legs up, they tend to be very bouncy. So that's something to watch out for. Okay, um, engines. Well, what engines would they have on the Mini ITS? We know that they have nine engines on the big one, and uh, so we're talking about 40% the mass. We're expecting 40% the engine thrust then. So we, well, we could uh, underdo it and have three engines, or, you know, actually four engines would be about right. Now, the thing is, the vacuum engines don't have gimbling, so we need the sea level engines to provide the gimbling and we will need at least two so that we have roll control. So we can't do without um, with anything less than two of the sea level engines which means that we're gonna have two of the vacuum engines. So let's arrange that. Raptor again please. Uh, we have work in progress vacuum engines. Okay. The fuel mixture in the tank is already okay. We'll assume two big ones like this. Now you could make your own new parts for the Mini ITS by using the rescale. You remember what I showed you with the Mark II expansion pack with the scaling? Well, you could just uh, do the same sort of scaling on the ITS and make yourself a Mini ITS with just changing the scale. Instead of scaling it bigger like 1.6, you could scale it down by uh, to 0.75 and you'll be all set there too. Uh, except you're going to have to rearrange the attachment nodes if necessary, so watch out for that. Now, we don't want the the sea level engines to be in like that because they might blast the vacuum engines. So, structural part, one little thing here, try and center it. I'm going to make it a little uh, fillet cylinder or however you pronounce that. Uh, two meters wide, say six meters long. We're going to have it roundified, and we want a texture that will blend into the back of that tank. So black.
that looks vaguely centered and then we can mount the sea level engines on that instead and that's pretty good okay so then we have four engines on this let's see what kind of thrust to weight ratio and burn time and everything we have okay so it says 1.6 thrust to weight ratio but we're not really carrying a load right now uh, the internal mass, the it's pretty light, I don't know, 77 tons is about the empty mass of the space shuttle as well. So that's good, lots of delta V. Perhaps we shouldn't put a load in until we, we put the booster on to see what our total delta V is and how much that will change. Now of course in realism overhaul you do that, uh, you change the internal stuff and add payload if you will uh, by uh, going through this UI. I made sure that the volume of this was larger than that taken up by the fuels. So that's sort of important, so you can add more food, oxygen, and other things in there. Apparently no water, that might be important. So uh, maybe we'll actually fill it up with water as the payload, but not right now. Okay, and of course we haven't resized the engines, right? So we're not going to have that outer ring of engines, that 21 engines. We're just going to have the inner, uh, the inner ring, inner circle, and then the center bit. Where is the center bit? Center cluster, which gimbals, of course. And so we just have 21 engines, but it shows up as two because it's only two parts. Okay, let's take a look. Well, that's plenty of delta V, that's for sure. We can definitely put some payload in. And as expected, our overall mass is about 40% of that of the ITS uh, without payload right now. So that is nominal. Everything as expected. And so, uh, let's add some water. So, we've got 78 tons here. And some water. Well, that's more than 200 tons of water. And that brings our uh, delta V down a little bit too much, especially if you want to recover the booster. We haven't put the fins on, by the way. I haven't forgotten that. Let's try um, about half of that water. Okay, well that's certainly enough to recover the the first stage. That's about a hundred tons of water. That'll be a good payload to start off with, and then if it turns out we've got surplus delta V our goal right now is to check what is the payload capacity of the mini ITS assuming that it is 9 meters in diameter. Now for some reason it still reads 12 meters here that might be because of the landing legs but yeah maybe it's because of those landing legs. I don't know if that's counted in their facility limitations or not but in any case it's satisfying that uh, this size fits the the 21 engine configuration properly. That suggests that this is what we we really want. There's also a possible 9 engine version of this. Uh, not 9 engine, sorry. Uh, 7 engine with the central cluster. And we should take a look at that as well. Okay, we are missing grid fins. And we want these ITS booster grid fins. I forget where exactly they put them and we will scale them appropriately uh, that is on the ender stage we don't want that okay so that's basically it let's put some launch clamps and see if ferrum aerospace is okay with this situation okay here we are and at first blush it it doesn't really look like a mini ITS, but it is smaller. I mean, it is only 4,123 tons with 100 tons of cargo inside. And so, yeah, uh, but it's still humongous. I mean, when you talk about um, 9 meter diameter, that's huge, uh, larger than anything except for the Saturn V and N1. And of course, its mass is larger than the Saturn V and N1 still. Even after the diameter has been scaled by a factor of 0.75, and it is uh, 0.4 times lighter. So, yeah, still humongous. Let's see what it can do. So right now, uh, its cargo capacity I've got as 100 tons, which would be less than Saturn V, but we're looking to increase that. We are uh, examining its capabilities. 
but let's see how that goes. I'm not using a KOS script right now uh, that in order to assess its trajectory and that's partly because it's gonna have a weird trajectory. Now this is in 1.1.3 I should be clear uh, because 1.1.3 is where my rocket profile stuff is and I have all sorts of engines and stu such. But uh, when you take a look at it, its thrust weight ratio is very high all around and it's only got six minutes of burn time though we can throttle down of course and we will uh, so yeah it's its trajectory is going to be interesting so let's see how it goes all right ignition and launch I need to maybe fix those plumes a bit but uh, low priority sort of situation. Those are not real plume plumes. I can add real plume plumes. Uh, also, uh, those should not be active at all. All right. Okay, so I will throw down when the G-force hits three Gs. I assume that uh, for passengers' sake, they would not expect them to bear more than that. So let's go to there for now. That'll extend our burn time, which makes it somewhat higher for the booster to come back, but we'll make sure it has enough delta V. Okay, I think I'm going to assume 30 seconds of stage time at full throttle is what we're going to save. Okay, set, and ignition. Hmm. Oh! Well, apparently this part doesn't have any communication. Well, we're going to have to solve that. Uh, while we're here, ooh, 6,464 meters per second is probably too much. So we should look to maybe uh, 20 seconds, yeah, maybe even less than that. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, it only needs to, if we take a look at the surface velocity, uh, 1,800 meters per second. And it can burn that off and then maybe another 500 for landing. Uh, well, it still has to go the other way a bit, so... Even if you make it double, that's still about half of what we actually have there. Okay, so let's add some communication to the pod. Well, actually, the easiest way to add communications to the pod is to add Kerbals to the pod. So we have all the usual suspects, Jeb, Val, Bill, and Bob, all in. So uh, here we go again. Ignition. Heck of a delay though. And launch. As you can see, it does have to turn quite quickly because it starts off with such a high thrust weight ratio and continues to have such a high thrust weight ratio. Okay, shut down. 19 seconds. Fair enough. Set. And ignition. Okay, good. Over here, 5,161 still. Plenty. Tons. Okay, let's have it roll. Well, we're going to have plenty of extra delta V at this rate with this 100 tons of water here. The neat thing about water is, of course, it's got a very set density. So, uh, you know that 100,000 units, which means 100,000 liters in realism overhaul, will end up being 100 tons. So that makes it very convenient to use as uh, as a dummy payload. So yeah, I mean, I guess we could use RCS to control this and shut off the sea level engines, but... Um, I forget if I've got the RCS sufficiently strong to control this while there's 3,000 kilonewtons going out of each of these engines. That's a lot of thrust to try and control with RCS. Okay, we're ending up in a rather tight orbit, but it's going to be orbit nonetheless as far as realism overhaul is concerned. Okay, 211 by 148, and we know the dry mass of this was 78 tons, let's call it 80, and we have 100 tons of water as payload, uh, which means that if you subtract those out, we have 55 tons of fuel left over. So, I would guess that we could carry 150 tons to orbit. Let's try that out. Okay, so here we are, and we're going to attempt 160 tons of payload. And 
that will be pretty good, I think. I think that's probably at the limit of what this can do if we want to recover the booster. And this time we will save 15 seconds of burn time down there. So ignition. And launch. And we'll double check that 15 seconds of burn time is not an absurd amount of del uh, too little delta V. We'll make sure about that. So yeah, um, one reason I hadn't done like the full ITS mission to Mars is, first of all, there's a lot of things that they still need to work out, frankly speaking. Um, but also the fact that it takes like six flights and six dockings to fill up the big ITS ship once it's in orbit. This mini ITS though affords us uh, an alternative plan. That plan is to send up the mini ITS and fuel it with the big ITS the tanker not the ship uh, so one uh, maybe one or two ITS tanker flights could fill up a mini ITS and that would make things a lot easier as far as conducting missions to Mars with it are concerned still there is the matter of slowing down at Mars and heating at Mars and actually landing I did implement a center of mass shift for the ship which is going to be necessary for SpaceX as well uh, to make sure that it can go through the atmosphere like uh, sort of a space shuttle or lifting body and then land on its tail. But that alone is not necessarily sufficient to uh, make this work out. Also, I don't know the effect that tweak scale has on the shift on center of mass. I have not assessed that yet. Another possibility for the engine configuration on the mini ITS ship is that they just add gimbling to the vac uh, to the vacuum engines. We're assuming that they're going to keep the vacuum engines as lacking in gimbling, but they could just have uh, two or three gimbling vacuum engines and that would suffice instead of having the sea level engines at all. Okay, here we go, getting ready for shutdown. Shut down, separation, all up, ignition. Our current surface velocity is 2,400, and in the booster we have 4,600, a little bit less than double. So that's probably cutting it close, maybe. I'm sure SpaceX could do it, but... For me to land that booster, that's probably cutting it close. So all in all, just adding tweak scale modules to these parts certainly makes it easier to scale your ITS however you like it. Just make sure that uh, you keep the engines the same and then you can have all sorts of different uh, little ITSs, big ITSs. I guess it'd be better if, I mean, I don't know, the window configuration is sort of generic. There's probably a minimum size for which those windows would make any sense. Okay, yep, cutting it real close on the Delta V here. We can be sure that the payload capacity of uh, an ITS of this size will be about 160 tons. And there we have it. Uh, 247 by 163, about 96 meters per second left, with a 160 ton payload. So, uh, for a 9 meter ITS, with about 40% of the mass of the full-sized ITS overall, uh, that is what we can bring up, which is still spectacular. I mean, considering uh, Saturn V was between 120 and 145 tons, this still beats it. Of course, it is heavier. Uh, it doesn't have the benefit of the hydrolock stages, uh, but we uh, we do have the more efficient methylox compared to the kerosene and oxygen mixture of the first stage of the Saturn V. And of course, we are reserving the fuel in the booster to bring it back home. This would probably be able to bring up more payload, of course, if it was a uh, stage with a payload on top and a normal fairing sort of situation instead of a unified ship. And so there is that consideration. We didn't really bring up much food and oxygen for the crew. Um, uh, yeah, oh, lots of water, uh, 28 years worth, but only 13 hours of food and oxygen. That would have to be supplied as well. 
I don't know about the ablator, and whether that uh, I'll have to take a look at various modes of heat. Oh, and uh, the ocean thing is because we're close to 160 kilometers. Once we get higher, um, those graphical glitches go away. But uh, yeah, don't know if that's the best way to uh, simulate the the heat shielding. I'll have to take a look at that. But maybe maybe uh, the fact that we have a mini ITS will make for a more pleasant sort of Mars mission for me. And we can sort of pack it in with the um, which got refueling equipment and see what happens. Yeah. So anyway, that's an idea. And there are probably future videos to be expected of this. Though maybe I'll wait until SpaceX actually tells us what the specs are. We'll see. Alright, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.